Okay, Bismillah. Rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Wa na'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani r-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shurah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Everyone, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You know, I'm sitting here in my home and obviously all of you are most likely sitting in your homes. Juma time, this time, I'm either in some masjid in Chicago or some other city or state getting ready for Juma khutbah or praying a Juma khutbah behind someone. It's such an unreal feeling. I mean, obviously, we are all in the same boat. Never could have imagined. And obviously, this is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the massages would be closed. We would be sitting at home, you know, locking down ourselves and praying to Allah, right? But Alhamdulillah, anything that happens, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is our aqidah. Now, despite all of these uh, challenges and tests and trials that we are facing, let me just start with a good news, inshallah, for all of you. So yesterday, we have two people embracing Islam, right? Allahu Akbar. So one person, he called around quarter to 11 a.m. on our Dawah hotline. And he said, I'm calling from the hospital and I came here to get my checkup. You know, I hope he's doing good. And then after a half an hour of conversation, he said he's ready to embrace Islam and on the phone from the hospital bed, this person he proclaimed, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Right? Allahu Akbar. Then a second person, something similar. So Alhamdulillah, what gives me and you hope? is obviously this wonderful hadith from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You know, narrated by Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he mentioned, and uh, let me just display, and I hope all of you are able to see my screen. So the Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wasallam that plague was a punishment which Allah used to send on whom he wished. But Allah made it as a blessing for the believers. None amongst the believers remain patient in a land in which the plague has broken out and considers that nothing will befall him except that Allah has ordained that for him, but that Allah will grant him a reward similar to that of a shaheed. And Allah Akbar. We need to remind ourselves. I mean, obviously, we need to do all the preparations and all the duas, but this is a hadith that gives us hope and glad tidings. Does it doesn't matter what happens to us, you know, Alhamdulillah, as Muslims, we say Alhamdulillah. Uh, for us, it is a win-win situation. So we need to share this with our families, with our youth, and also with the non-Muslims out there, that this is how the Muslim belief is. Doesn't matter in times of peace, in times of challenges. So Alhamdulillah, the topic that was, so this narration is uh, an authentic narration from Imam Bukhari's collection. So the topic that was given to me is the mission continues, right? The mission continues. And then you may be thinking and you may be saying, you know, what is the mission that I am speaking about? What I mean by the mission is that doesn't matter in what times that we are in, what century that we are in, what challenges that we are facing, we always have to remind ourselves about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran, in Surah 33, ayah number 21, as the best example for all of us to follow. So Allah says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem Lakhad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasanatun liman kana yarju Allah wal yawm al akhirah wa zakar Allah kathira. That in the person of Muhammad, peace be upon him, you have the best example to follow. For those who believe in Allah in the last day and remembers Allah much. So let us take a look at what were the ways that the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he was going through tests and trials and challenges, how did he pull himself out in having hope in Allah, praying to Allah and doing the right preparation? And then later on, inshallah, in about 10 minutes or so, I will provide and I will share. And I will remind myself about some of the action items, some of the action items arising from the mission 
of the Prophet, peace be upon him, that we can on individual basis and as a family and as a Muslim community, what action items that we can do, inshallah, despite many, many limitations that Allah has given to us. And then we will conclude. And perhaps I may give five minutes or so towards the end for any comments or questions. Now it's really important for us. The mission of the Prophet was twofold is to obey Allah and to connect humanity right with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First and foremost, to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was the mission of all the Muslims. And then his mission was to connect humanity with La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Doesn't matter any times that he was going through. So to connect humanity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he took the route of educating them, providing them relief, providing them social justice, and reminding them who is the creator, what is the purpose of life, and then including them in the mission of them worshipping the creator and doing good deeds. That is the way for salvation. So if this is the mission of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it is important that yes, we want to help our neighbors and humanity, the sick, the old, the disabled. But that help cannot be just in isolation. Because as we will see, inshallah, I will show in the next slide, the Prophet's help was not in isolation. It was always connected himself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and connecting the person who he was helping with the greater power and the purpose and the life in the hereafter. So it's a holistic mission that the Prophet used to have. And inshallah, we need to remind ourselves with that same mission so we can continue that, right? So these are some of the examples that from the Prophet Sira that I was able to extract as a reminder to me and for all of you. So the very first example I have is that the Jewish boy, as we know from the Prophet Sira, he was, the Jewish boy was laying down on his bed and he was close to dying. The Prophet was called and he went there and he, uh, the father of the boy was next to the, uh, the boy, next to the bed. And the Prophet, for a concern with this person, yes, the Prophet came for condolence and for help, but he also came to remind this Jewish person, embrace Islam. Say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And the, and the father, he st started to encourage the boy to say it, right? So even in that, uh, you know, dying situation, life and death situation, the Prophet was concerned about humanity, about this boy, and about the rest of the people. Because yes, he know, he, I mean, we all know, the Prophet knew that the life in the hereafter is for eternal. And then there was the encounter with Adas. Adas was a, was a young person from the Christian faith. The Prophet encountered him right after he came out from the most challenging, the toughest day of his life. And that day was the day when he was pelted with stones. We know from the prophets here, the children know this. When he was pelted with stones, he came out from the city of Taif. And he was, the city of Taif was kind of, you know, he can still see, it, but he was away from all the commotion and all the beating that he went through. You know, blood was soaking, he was not able to barely walk. At that point, some people from the neighborhood of that city, they gave him, they sent this person Adas with some fruits, with some nourishment. And this person Adas was a person from the Christian background. So even in the toughest day of the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he remembered to convey the message of Islam and to connect Adas, reminding him who is the creator. And as the story goes, Alhamdulillah, this person, he recognized the prophet to be as a true prophet. And then the six months to three years of boycott, the prophet and the Muslims they went through, even in those tough times, you know, just imagine, nobody was dealing with them. They were lacking the necessities and people were dying. Even his wife Khadija, she passed away. His uncle passed away later. Even in those tough times, the prophet used to approach the outskirts of where the boycott was and he used to still convey the message to those individuals who used to come for the pagan pilgrimage. So even in the toughest of the time, the prophet's mission continued. 
and obviously he is the best example for all of us to follow. All right. So besides uh, praying to Allah, preparing ourselves, the Prophet always used to be, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, reminded of his neighbors and of humanity in general. So what are some of the action items that we can do? Because you know, obviously we can remind ourselves about Allah subhanahu wa taala, His mercy, and we can help. But what we can do on the ground, starting today. I mean, many of you started, alhamdulillah, right? Many days ago, preparation and doing wonderful work for many, many years. What can you and me, we can do, inshallah. Now, when I looked at this uh, video and this article that came in Chicago Tribune, I was really excited. So this is from a church. So what, they, what the church has done is, they have given the list, the membership list of the church to the families and they are mm -hmm. having the young children as volunteers to call maybe five people and 10 people, the seniors and all the members eventually to call them and just check on them, how they are doing, do they need any help? You know, sometimes people may not need any physical help, but just somebody calling them, it's just like a blessing, right? People are locked down. If someone calls me, actually a brother, he called me in the morning from the masjid about half an hour from here. Just to check up on me, you know, Brother Sabir, how are you? How are you doing? Is your family okay? It meant a lot to me. In the same way, one action item for all of us. You may be doing it, your masjid may be doing it, but just a good reminder. The masjid may have a list, membership list, for example, uh, that can be distributed, you know, like five or 10 members can be distributed to call maybe 1,000 people, 500 people. It doesn't have to be all in one day. You may have the ikna list, or you may have you know, your khandan, your family list. Just give them a call, inshallah. It just feels better since we cannot meet each other face to face. But don't just limit to that. Call your non-Muslim neighbors and friends and colleagues. Yes. Just give them a call. You know, Joe, how are you? Just calling to see how your family is doing. Do you guys need any help? You know, we are here to help you. We are here for each other. It means a lot. So compile this list and involve the kids in there if you could, right? MashaAllah, I mean, my kids are home. They're getting bored, even though we keep mm -hmm. on engaging mm -hmm. them, you know, playing and reading and Quran and all the activities, still kids are getting bored. So this is a really good activity for the whole family, inshallah, to, to, to do together. Now, this card has been taken out to approach the neighborhood. So this is not for the city-wide or nationwide. You know, mashallah, Ikna Relief is doing that. But just like, okay, for me, in my block, I have about 40 houses, right? Including my house, 40 houses. They may not know the masjid services. They may not know Ikna Relief or social justice or helping hand services, but they know mm -hmm. me as Sabil Ahmed, their neighbor. So if I give this or if I hang it on the door, they know me and they may trust me. And if there is any help, they may give me a call right away. And I can be there right, you know, just in a few seconds. So a really good reminder and an encouragement for each single one of you and me and my family is to print out, to make or print out a card like this. So this is good to go, right? So it says from your Muslim neighbor, and then it reminds them of a hadith from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that says that he's not a believer whose stomach is filled while the neighbor to his side goes hungry. Again, as I always said, and this was the mission of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he did services in a holistic perspective. He also used to remind people about the Creator also. So you can print this out. Uh, if anyone wants later, inshallah, we can send it to the national and brother Iftihad, brother Iftihad and Brother Farhan, then we can upload that, right, inshallah. You know, we are getting many, many calls on the Vaislam Dawa hotline and on the Gain Pieces Dawa hotline. And maybe relief also perhaps getting, but we get calls from the non-Muslims. So just like people have uh, physical needs for food, water, you know, nourishment, they also have many, many needs, spiritual needs. Especially in these times, people are contemplating, pondering about higher power, purpose of life, why this is happening. So people are calling us. 
So one action item for your majid, for your ikna chapter, for just you could be to start have webinars. This is not for Muslims. This is not for the new Muslims or the youth. These webinars should be targeted towards the non-Muslims, especially those in the remote areas. And we can have many different topics. The topics of you know, Islamic hygiene, medical advice you can provide and whatnot. I mean, it's unlimited you know, topics you can do, right? So that's uh, the next action item. This is uh, the scene in the nearby Costco. Other stores perhaps something similar. So my advice to myself, my family, and each single one of you, when you go out to shop for something, some necessity, you know, like bread, tissue paper, Kleenex, sanitizers, perhaps they're out, but the other necessities, purchase something extra. Keep it in your garage, keep it in some storage. And, you know, unfortunately, if uh, Allah knows, if there is a lockdown for extended period, if challenges happen, may Allah protect all of us. These would be the extra things not only we can use, but especially we want to share them with those in our neighborhood who may be disabled right now, they're not able to go out, who may be old, and those people who may have, you know, just forgotten to save extra. So when you go out, get something extra, inshallah. You know, obviously, how can we miss it, right? Our relief team. Even though my specialty is dawa, but I have to remind myself that the Sahaba, they used to wear many, many hats. Like Abu Bakr Siddiq, he was, as soon as he found out that uh, his friend, means Muhammad, peace be upon him, was appointed as a messenger, as a prophet by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not only he accepted Islam, he go, went and conveyed to his family and to his friends. Then later on, when there was a need in the community, freeing of the slaves and social justice and relief and whatnot, speaking about 1400 years ago, Abu Bakr Siddiq, he used to take part in all of those things. He did not say, you know what, relief is doing that, that was a relief team, let them do it. No, we as Muslims, we need to wear many, many hats, especially in our neighborhood and especially in our cities. So we cannot come compartmentalize and just say, you know, someone else is doing it. We as Muslims, we need to take part. Doesn't matter one hour a week, just take part in the relief activities, donate to them, donate to other activities. And this was the example again from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? Now, this is a billboard that is about to go up, inshallah, in Chicago. In other cities, if you want, we can send you the file and you can modify or use it as is. Mm -hmm. Now, this billboard on the highway mm -hmm. is to remind mm -hmm. the people that, you know, washing of hands, uh, do not leave the areas where there is a plague, do not visit the area where there is a plague or infection. It is not the current advice of the 21st century modern medical you know, science. This was the advice coming from Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And obviously, he was guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala way back 1500 or so years ago. So we need to remind people that Islam's message and guidance is eternal. And this may spark some mm -hmm. conversations and this is a good way, alhamdulillah, to convey the message. Mm -hmm. How do we keep the kids engaged, right? I'm wrapping up, inshallah, then if there is any question. How do we keep, how do we keep the kids engaged? So one activity that your masjid, your ikna chapter that you can do with mm -hmm. me, you can have a video contest or an essay writing contest, three minute video or 300 word essay. Mm -hmm. You know, your chapter can do it. It can be a nationwide. Actually, MCNA would be the mm -hmm. best, right? Inshallah, anyone from MCNA is listening. You can be, uh, inshallah, take uh, in charge of this. And I have some sample mm -hmm. questions mm -hmm. over here. Mashallah, the kids, the youth, they can research. You know, just like there is a Islam quiz, this can be a video contest or essay writing contest. So the youth can research, they can write, and they can submit, and they can receive prizes. So at the comfort of their home, inshallah, they're engaging in good research, good education. And inshallah, if they make the videos, we also want them to become public speakers, mm -hmm. competent mm -hmm. communicators, which is so much needed in this day and age, inshallah. You know, this is a good time for us to do internal webinars and trainings. For example, on behalf of Gain Peace, 
and also why Islam, we do many, many open houses around the nation. You know, Sultan Bhai, if you're listening, right, we have many, many in Houston, in Dallas, in New Jersey, New York, you know, LA, Arizona, mashallah, different places. Now is the team, now is the time for us, our teams, to do that internal training of the leadership and of the volunteers, right? How to run an efficient open house, uh, how to, and training the volunteers for, for dawa tables, perhaps. So there are many, many internal trainings that we can do. So once, inshallah, hopefully, inshallah, very soon, when things become better and all the things we can do outside, we are already fully prepared and good to go, right, inshallah. And last but not the least, it's important. You know, every chapter, every city, every state, mashallah, every masjid doing wonderful work of helping the neighbors, helping the community, you know, relief and social services, social justice. It's important for us having a really good, solid media contacts from your Ikna chapter, from your masjid, and sharing with them by sharing the press releases, having virtual you know, press conferences, perhaps, inshallah. So we want to amplify uh, the efforts of Ikna and Masjid and Muslim community, not for the sake of showing off, we should not be doing it, but we want to show to the world that this is what, this is who Muslims are. We are empowered, inspired, and motivated by the Quran, by Islam, and through the noble life of Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he keep on blessing us and guiding us and make it easy for us. So all of us, inshallah, together, not only we take care of ourselves, our families, may Allah make it easy for us so we can take care of humanity through Allah's guidance. With that, Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.